So what we're going to talk about now is the formation of tropical storms. We know that tropical storms bring heat, moisture and they also spin. So what we have here is um, we need heat. So it's got to be, temperature needs to be above 27 degrees Celsius. We need moisture, therefore they have to occur over an ocean where we've got lots of moisture and that ocean needs to have warmth up to about 60 meters in, in depth and we also need the spin so we're talking between five degrees north of the equator and 30 degrees north or south of the equator and that will allow the storm to spin so around about here we would get tropical storms forming we're over an ocean it's nice and warm as it's between the tropics um, and it's far enough north to be able to spin. So we have here an area of low pressure because the air above the ocean just here is nice and warm. It's being warmed by the nice warm deep sea. And as that air warms, it starts to rise and it rises rapidly. And that creates an area of low pressure at the surface. Air will then rush in from the surroundings um, in order to replace the air that has just risen. But instead of rushing in in straight lines, it twists, it spins. So the air actually comes in like this. It comes in and it is deflected to the right because of the Coriolis force. So what we end up with is a spinning storm as you can see there from the diagram it's rotating in an anti-clockwise direction because air has been deflected to the right due to the coriolis force which is the earth's spin so that's a bird's eye view of the storm let's now look at this in a cross-sectional view so we've got we've got our ocean let's put the bottom of the ocean there and it's a nice warm ocean, so we're talking 27 degrees centigrade, and it needs to be deep. So we've got our source, source of moisture. What happens then? Air above this ocean is going to warm up due to this warm ocean, and it will rise. And it rises rapidly. And the fact that it rises rapidly means that it creates strong winds. As that air rises, more air is sucked in, from the surroundings which also rises and this continually happens air rises and sucks more in this creates low pressure at the surface now as that air is rising it's not just rising straight up it's spinning because of the earth's coriolis force so the air is rising up and spinning at the same time as the air rises it cools down and any moisture in it will condense, which will form droplets and will form cloud. And this keeps happening deep into the atmosphere, very high up. These storms, these clouds might be forming 13 kilometres high. So we end up with deep, towering, cumulonimbus is what we call them, clouds, as the air um, has condensed and cooled to form all this cloud cover. With that cloud cover comes rain. So we end up with rain bands coming from the storm. Okay. When the air rises, cools and condenses, it also releases heat and that heat drives the storm further, which is why it can grow to such a big height. So now we end up with a storm where air is being sucked in, rising, cooling, condensing to forming clouds. More air is being sucked in, rising, cooling, condensing to form clouds. And this is all happening rapidly. And, and that right, rapid rising air is creating very, very windy conditions. The final thing to say is in the middle of the storm, we end up with slightly higher pressure and air therefore sinking. That sinking air the, um, creates a clear sky because the opposite has happened. Rising air cools and condenses to form clouds. Falling or sinking air um, evaporates 
to create clear conditions. So in the middle of the storm here, we end up with a nice, clear, calm eye, is what it's called, surrounded by lots and lots of cloud. OK, so that's the structure of the storm. Final thing to say, it is then blown across the globe in a westerly direction in line with the trade winds. So coming back to this diagram, this storm here will blow across in a westerly direction because the trade winds are heading west at this, um, this point in the, in, the, in the world and it will hit land. On hitting land, it will start to migrate north. And the reason for that is it can't really go much onto the land because it will lose its source of moisture. And storms need moisture in order to fuel them. So it can't really track too much onto the land. It will start to track north, but again, it will die out because the further north it goes, it loses its source of heat. And so if it's lost heat or it's lost moisture, it dies. And that's the end of the storm. So that's generally why they hit land and after you know a day or two they tend to die out and they tend to follow up the coastal areas wreaking havoc in those places because the wind speeds are so fast, the, um, the, 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 the rains are very intense and because they bring such low pressure the sea is actually able to rise up which creates massive waves on the coastal areas here which are called storm surges. Okay, that's it with your formation of tropical storms.